Assalamu alaikum viewers. This is Sifras Kearney for Pegami Health. Today we're going to be joined by uh, Dr. Umar Ramhai. He's in Canada. Uh, Assalamu alaikum brother. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum brother. Thank you for hosting me. Uh, first of all, I'm really honored to for for us that you are joining us today. You're very uh, you're welcome to join our show, and we have a very important topic we're going to discuss today. Before we go on to the, our topic discussion today, let me briefly introduce about Dr. Omar Amai. He's a, currently he's a professor of engineering and electric engineering and computer engineering Waterloo University in Canada. He has authored a lot of articles, more than 400. He's an author and co-author in those articles. And he has a PhD doctorate electrical engineering and computer engineering. He has done a lot of research in Quran. He has given many lectures in Islam and Quran. And also he has a very uh, uh, good book, which is titled as Muslims Greatest Challenge, Choosing Between Traditional Tradition and Islam. And it is a very good book available on Amazon. I will highly recommend you guys to get this book. So, uh, Dr. Omar, today topic we have chose to is about ibadat. So this is a very uh, important subject, and a lot of people get confused on that. And there is a surah al dhariyat and there is a verse fifty one fifty six that talk about it. And they, the Allah says that you know He said that we create Allah created jinn and ins. Uh, the 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 meaning people take is that Allah created jinn and ants just to worship Him. Can you please elaborate on that? Thank you. Certainly. First of all, very uh, happy and honored to be here, and thank you so much for hosting me and giving me the opportunity to share my ideas and also uh, to uh, make people aware of of my work, which you just. Uh, uh, mentioned at the beginning. So the 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 first of all, before we uh, start discussing this verse uh, uh, or the concept of ibadat in the Quran, verse fifty one, Surah fifty one, verse fifty six, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنْسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ. Uh, we have, I think, first of all, to 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 use a, a primer or to, if I may say, to look to have a different perspective as far as looking at the Mus'haf or the Quran, as many people would call it, or the divine revelation or the book. Uh, we have to realize a few things. Be be before we start, you know, it, 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 let me give you an analogy that will explain, I hope, what I'm trying to say. If I tell you, uh, X plus Y equals 15. And uh, I start explaining to you what is that X uh, is I'm trying to solve for X or I'm trying to solve for Y and so forth. Y is, let's say, the, the X is the variable and Y is a function. If a person doesn't understand that this is an equation, what I am discussing with you is an equation, I don't think we go anywhere. So, so there are some preliminaries before we start looking into the works of Allah. We, we have come to, uh, ex, uh, to use or to treat the words of Allah as words of man. We have come to consider the, the text, the divine text, as a text created by man or woman for that matter or humans. And this, this concept, I think, originated from a primitive, very primitive perspective that the Arabs at the time of the Prophet and after he died had. Very primitive perspective. They, they juxtaposed their understanding on the Mus'haf. In other words, the Mus'haf ceased to be the reference in terms of context, language, and words. The Mus'haf ceased to be a reference. Whereas 
Allah is sending us the message that this is the reference. This is complete. It's fully exposed. It's fully detailed as far as the details that Allah wanted to give us. Period. Okay. Now, this concept is, is alien nowadays to many people. This concept that I just expressed, which I don't think, if we put it the way I did, people will find objection to it. Nevertheless, it is alien. We're not used to that. You see, and I'll get to the subject in a second, but very, very important to go over these preliminaries. Allah sent us several messages in the divine revelation that this is from me. This is not from humans. This work, this document, this hidayah is not from humans, which means now, now I really don't care. You know, if someone tells me this is from Allah or from a human, do I really care? What matters is the following, is that if it's from Allah, then the system of Allah has to be understood, not the system of man. That's what matters to me. It's not that it's coming from a, from a higher authority or a lower authority. The concept, the important thing is that it has to be perceived in a way that is different from how we perceive a letter that I send you personally, or a letter or a document that was written 1500 years ago by a human to another human. So now this is very important to keep in mind. Now the, the Allah is communicating to us. Allah is communicating to us with what? With language. Right. He's not using sign language. He's using language. And Allah's actually lisan, lisan on Arabi. Allah says he's using lisan on Arabi. He doesn't say language, but a tongue, an, an Arabic tongue. We can talk about what Arabic means if you wish, you know, yeah, we can yeah. talk about it. But Allah is saying, I'm communicating with you with a tongue which is pure and complete. A tongue which is pure and complete. Lisan on Arabi. Arabi doesn't mean an Arab the way we understand it nowadays. It means it's something perfect and complete. Now, so when we when we start preconditioning ourselves, start preconditioning ourselves to, to view this divine revelation as something coming from not man, something something coming from Allah his own style, his own, his own structure. Now, when we look at, when we look at the word Ibadah, okay, when we, we look at the word Ibadah, which is the context of this, uh, which is the theme of this uh, discussion that we have today or this interview, Ibadah is typically understood to imply worship. Right. Now, <clears throat> Let's assume I don't speak English. You know, I thought about this today. If I don't speak English and, and you were to explain to me, let's say I'm an Arab. Uh, I mean, I understand the language of the Arabic language. And I come across لتعبدون. Okay. Well, I don't understand English. So if you try to tell me it means to worship, I say, I'm sorry, I really don't understand. I, I, of course, I will use sign language to tell you, sorry, I right. don't understand what worship means. So one thing, number one, is that, of course, you have to explain to me. You have to explain to me some in, in, in some other means, right? Right. Uh, you know, suppose I'm an Arab who's a non-Muslim and wants to convert to Islam, and I'm curious. I, I'm sorry, I'm an Arab. I'm an Arab but I want to convert to Islam. So I'm an Arab, but a non-Muslim. I want to convert to Islam and I read this. So where do I begin? If you tell me it means worship, hmm, uh, I, I, I don't understand. So, okay, so this is a, a thought. A very thought. Important, important point. You made. Yeah, this is something too. Now, if, if we want to understand uh, the the Mus'haf, the divine revelation, and the and the Quran, and uh, one one method one method to understand it 
is something that was advocated by the the the, the dean of mufassirin if i may say right the the guru of of exegetes exegetes uh, and that was ibn kathir who uh, who said or he advocated the the concept of uh, explaining or tafsir or understanding the mushaf the quran through the mushaf using the 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 divine revelation to understand the divine revelation which is great and he said this i don't know when he lived uh, 700 800 years ago i don't uh, remember the date of his death exactly but he lived hundreds and hundreds of years ago ibn kathir this method is a very powerful method to understand the mushaf from within from itself from itself now uh, nature nature if i want to study nature how can i study nature this is a very interesting question i, I want to study nature how would i study nature uh, i want to study how atoms behave i want to study how molecules interact it's impossible impossible that i bring something from outside nature to understand nature i think it's impossible i don't think that i can i can use reasoning reasoning i.e mathematics to understand nature i can use mathematics to express nature but I cannot use mathematics to understand nature. It's a huge difference. Right. So, so that's why when when it, what Ibn Kathir said makes a lot of sense. But the surprise is the following: is that he didn't act on it. <laughs> Number one, and Ibn Kathir actually contradicted what he claimed is the right methodology to understand the divine revelation. Two things. One, he did not act on it, and I can give you tons of examples, but our subject here is not to glorify or demonize Ibn Kathir. That's not our subject, right. okay? Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you that he mentioned this long time ago, and I wish that people stuck to it, because there's no other way to understand many things in the Mus'haf, except by going to the Mus'haf itself. So, if we go to Ibadah, if I want to understand, and going back to that example that I told you, I'm an Arab, I want to become a Muslim, and I don't understand what this word. So what I would do is that I try to classify, I try to start classification, this classification process that literally is literally mentioned in the Mus'haf, and that is ta'wil, tartil, sorry, sorry, tartil, tartil, has nothing to do with utterance. Tartil is, has nothing to do with utterance. Tartil is to put things in the proper order. Rattil al Qur'ana tartila. Okay, to put things in a proper order. Uh, the, 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 in, in, in Tunisia, for instance, Tunisia is a, one of the Arab countries that use, it has one of the strongest Arabic programs people who want to learn arabic typically go to tunisia or jordan but in tunisia they still use for instance arabic numerals if you look at the train in in tunisia they call it a rattle <laughs> they don't call it al qatar in all arab countries they call it al qatar in tunisia they call it a rattle because you put one car behind the other behind the other behind the other so you line them up properly Allah says, Rattil al Qur'ana tartila. So the tartil implies a process of classification. So we start to put things closer, th similar things together to get an idea. Okay, so this is this is the beginning. This is the beginning. Now, if I don't find an answer in in this process, then I am then I can perhaps go elsewhere. I can go to the root of the word. Okay, the, the, the root of the word is something that Arab uh, teachers and Arab linguists have violently uh, ignored. I don't know why. I why don't is know. that? Why is there no? Uh, 
I I don't know why. I'm a product. I'm a product of 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 Arab schooling. I I spent my elementary years in Arab countries. Uh, six years. I spent one of the middle years, two of the middle e uh, school years in Arab country, and three of the high school years in an Arab country. So I, I can say I'm a product of elementary and, and secondary education in an Arab country. They never taught us the meaning of words, except, except in a very, very uh, isolated circumstances where the words were uncommon. Like when we wanted to study poetry and poets usually use big words to impress others. So in that context, in that context, did, uh, did they uh, introduce the meaning of certain words? But that's very, very limited. However, when we come to words in, in the Mus'haf, for instance, Ya'bud, Yadrub, Yusabbih, Yasjud, Yarka, they never taught us the meaning of these words. So you're saying that it was systematically done because in the past history, I mean, something went wrong or something was done by force or systematically they suppressed that thing, the exact? That, that's, brother, that's a very, very good thought. That's a very good question. I, I, I cannot say for sure, but there are interesting questions that, that arise. And one of them is the one that you just posed. The, the importance of language, the most important thing about language is the meaning of words and the concept that I want to convey to you. You know, I, I want to convey to you a concept so I will use words and I put them in context. So if I don't understand the meaning of words, I don't think there's a purpose for language. Now, back to your question, and then we'll come to the subject, is that Arabs were intoxicated by poetry, in intoxicated ad nauseum, just like many Pakistanis are intoxicated by poetry. You know, it's, right. it, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a disease, in my opinion, it's a disease, you know. And now I'm not against poets. I'm not against poetry, not at all, okay? But my point is that the Arabs stressed, stressed the new language structure that they created more than 130, 140 years after the Prophet died. There were schools of grammar that emerged, okay? And so these schools of grammar, they took the upper hand and they started dominating the study of language. They started dominating, okay? And that's, in my opinion, it's a catastrophe. You know what? Forgive me for giving this introduction because we jump, we tend to open the text. Let's say someone like me, an Arab. We, we think, oh, I know Arabic. I can open the text. I can open the Quran and start understanding it. But the reality is that Arabs were not taught largely the meaning of words, the meaning of words. Okay, so if we look at, uh, so to be specific right now, without going, you know, further, uh, when Allah says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Okay, yeah. now, إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Let me uh, uh, just, uh, I'll put the verse here next to me so that I, uh, so that uh, I'll make sure that I pronounce it uh, correctly. Um, okay. There, there, sorry, sometimes I, I, my, my, my thoughts get distracted because the subject is so fascinating and broad. So you need to to bring me back to 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 the to the center. But let's go back to this verse. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنْسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Allah says, and and let's analyze it with with clarity, with open mind, open heart, and without any preconceived notions, any preconceived notion, any preconceived indoctrination as well any preconceived indoctrination as well. If we believe that the divine revelation is complete, if we believe that its exposition is within itself, 
And if we believe that the details that Allah wanted us to know are within itself, then I really don't need to go any further except, except I need to use built-in logic, built-in logic in my system as a human. I need to, that's very important. What do I mean by built-in logic? Built-in logic, it sounds very, very trivial, a, a simple statement, but it's very profound. Built-in logic, it means that I need to understand what the meaning of and, the meaning of or, right. the meaning of not. <laughs> and and for those who know computers, then they realize that computers are based on <laughs> these three, right? right? And or not. So if I don't understand, if, if I mix not, if I don't understand when I say do not eat, with eat, if I don't realize the difference between them, my definition is that I'm no longer a human. Right. Okay. So Allah says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I created, I, I خَلَقْتْ And خَلَقَ is, is, is a word that we can understand by going to many verses in the Mus'haf in the same style that I'm going to talk about right now. But our interest is not khalaqa. Let's say khalaqa is create. And I created the jinn and ins except for a purpose, and that is li'abudun. Li'abudun, yes. Okay, now, if we think logically, Allah created something for a purpose for a purpose. And let's leave Ya'budun untranslated. Li'abudun. If he fails, if Allah failed in this objective, do you think he is a God worthy of worship? I don't think so. If Allah fails, if Allah says, I created jinn and ins for, to do something, and we find him failing, then 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 he is not a god worthy of worship. Very good point you raise. Very interesting. Yeah. 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 So now illa illa it's an exception. Except it, it, to to translate it. For instance, if you look at Dr. Ghali, and I wrote it here, uh, Dr. Ghali's translation, and in no way did I create the jinn and humankind except to worship except to worship. It right. makes a lot of sense. Okay. Uh, let's look at another verse, uh, two other verses in the Quran. And I apologize. I don't remember the number of these verses, but I wrote them down because they buttress this, the meaning of illa. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ غَسُولٍ إِلَّا لِيُطَاعَ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ We have sent a messenger uh, what, who, whatever or any messenger we sent, we sent him so that he will be obeyed. Allah didn't stop there. If look, Subhanallah, if he said we sent the messengers, we sent so that they will be obeyed. Period. Hmm, something is not right. Yeah. <laughs> because. Some messengers we know were not obeyed, and some obeyed him, and some didn't. Right. But Allah says, "Illa liyuta biidnillah," by the permission of Allah. So, so that's the completion. Wa ma'arsalim rasul illa. So that's one verse that has the use uh, that has the word illa, except or so for so that. Okay. The other one, يَوْمَ يَقُومُ الرُّوحُ وَالْمَلَائِكَةِ صَفًّا لَا يَتَكَلَّمُونَ When, on the day when the spirit, a ruh, let's just leave it a ruh for now, the ruh, and the angels rise up in ranks. يَوْمَ يَقُومُ الرُّوحُ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ صَفًّا لَا يَتَكَلَّمُونَ They will not speak, they don't speak. إِلَّا 
من أذن له الرحمن وقال صوابا except him to whom the all merciful has given permission and who speaks literally who speaks so these two examples that I just plucked out of the of the book of the Quran use the word illa clearly illa illa has a specific meaning okay which means that for that purpose for that purpose so at the day of judgment at the day of judgment the day of resurrection or the the latter day uh, that's a different subject we can talk about it later allah is saying that nobody will be allowed to talk say yatakallamuna except for who the rahman gave him permission to so if we try to play games with illa to say no 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 illa doesn't mean you know it means if and but and so forth it means that on the day of judgment people may violate <laughs> may speak without the permission of a rahman which doesn't make sense so these two examples i just gave to go back to the verse وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ so we have created الْجِنْ وَالْإِنسَ for the purpose of only for the purpose of يعبدون okay so obviously now now this is the next question now clearly if if عِبَادَة means the classical understanding of ibadah worship right. then allah has then allah has failed in his mission and and that that's the the most important thing to to notice okay. so you know, brother Omar, uh, <clears throat> very good point you raised so you're saying that the yabadun is basically it's not doesn't mean worship actually it means to follow allah's laws in Allah's system well you know what and and let's elaborate I, i'm trying to pave the way slowly i'm trying to go step by step sure. okay because sure. because because it seems like you know we muslims have abandoned the mushaf for a long time long long time that's what the prophet said right in the in the in the quran ya qawmi you know i fear that my qawm right. have abandoned the mushaf <laughs> it seems like that prophecy, if I may say loosely, has happened. That's why we have to go slowly on these concepts that some people find so alien. And the reason we find them alien, because we really left the Mus'haf aside. Let me continue with few verses to buttress the understanding. Allah says in 5118, verse Surah 5, verse 118, إن تعذبهم فإنهم عبادك وإن تغفل لهم فإنك أنت العزيز الحكيم In case you choose to torment them, تعذبهم then surely they are your عباد Let's leave it untranslated وإن تغفل لهم فإنك أنت العزيز الحكيم So here Allah is talking about a group of us people Okay that he may torment or torture but he is referring to allah is saying if you torment them they are your ibad so so ibad can be tortured or can be forgiven mm. next 1431 1431 allah says Qul li يُقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَيُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ سِرًّا وَعَلَانِيَةً مِنْ قَبْلْ أَنْ يَأْتِي يَوْمٌ لَا بَيْعٌ فِيهِ وَلَا خِلَالٌ قُلْ لِعِبَادِي You know, typically it's translated, the, the translators typically translate قُلْ as say, and I think this is wrong, frankly. قُلْ doesn't mean say. Qul means to proclaim, to declare, to promulgate. Doesn't mean to say. Mm. Okay. Unless say means that. <laughs> okay. Qul li ibadiyya. Alladheena amanu. Promulgate to ibadi. Those 
who have made iman, which means that there are ibadi who did not make iman. Right. So Allah Allah specifies قل عبادي. He didn't say قل عبادي يقيم الصلاة. Look, قل عبادي الذين آمنوا. So out of عبادي, there's a subset those who آمنوا, those who made iman. Iman. Which, yeah. yeah, which means there's another subset those who did not make iman. Did not make it right. Okay, so this is another proof that عباد does not mean those who are submitting to Allah or those who are quote unquote worshipping Allah. I will continue, but you have a point? Yes, no, this is a very important point you raised. But, but before I continue, we have confused or, or many Muslims have lumped many concepts together. And when we lump things together, we really lose a lot of information naturally, right? right? When, when you, you know, if, if, if we look at the blood, oh, we say blood is different from milk because it's red. Right. But, but, but blood has tons of constituents. And the more we understand these constituents, the more we can control the blood and the more we can control disease. So the, the, the point here is when there are people who don't, don't I, I will establish soon that everybody is ibad. That's what I'm going to get to is that every, all, every, every human, all humans are ibadullah. All humans are ibadullah. Okay. Now, there are people that sever relationship with Allah. Okay. Allah refers to them in the Mus'haf as Al-Mujrimun. Now, there are people who don't believe in Muhammad. Okay. So, there are people who are kuffar in something, not in something else. Okay. So, there are, many, there are Al-Yahud. There is uh, 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 there is Alladina Hadu. Look, there is a Yahud and there is Alladina Hadu. There is Ulul Kitab. There is Alladina Amanu. There is Al Mujrimun. There are many classifications. Now, if if someone is not interested in this, you know, Allah says, La ikraha fi din. You know, one doesn't need to listen to what we're saying, but if one is interested, if we look at the Mus'haf carefully, there are several classifications. I cannot ignore them. I cannot. You know, Alladina Ulul Kitab, Alladina Amanu, Al Nasara, Alladina Hadu, now Al Mujrimun. Allah clearly says in the Mus'haf, clearly says that uh, you don't worry about them. I will judge between all of you, Alladina Amanu, Wa Sabi'un, Wa Nasara. Clearly, clearly Allah says, don't bother. I will judge between you. I don't remember the verse, but it's, it's, a, it's, it's, I can reproduce it very quickly if you wish. But Allah says, don't bother. I will make a judgment. Look, uh, sorry. I will make, I will make hukum. I will make arbitration, if I may say. I will make, um, I, I, I will, I will maybe maybe judge is 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 a good way to put it maybe, but the point the the powerful point here is that Allah is treating Alladina Amanu on the same footing with Nasara, was Sabi'in, wal Yahud. Wow, that's amazing. I mean, is isn't that isn't that sufficient for for those Muslims who are who are thinking that the gates of heaven are open for them only? I mean, you know, wh why do we think that? I mean, who, who guarantees, you know, even the prophet says, I don't know what will happen to me. لا أدري ما, ما يفعل بي. The prophet himself, he said, I don't know what will happen to me. Did, 
did did Allah say to the Prophet, "You're heading to the to to the to to Jannah uh, directly"? It's not my business. I, I'm not saying that. I'm trying to minimize the 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 rank of the prophets or not. But but what is this business that we get into? I think we we should go back into the business of understanding the text. Now, if I may say, there's another verse that is also equally powerful that continue on, to continue in our discussion 5010 surah verse uh, surah 50 uh, verse number 10 wan nakhlu basiqatin laha tal'un nadid and the palm trees whether it's palm trees or or the generic type of trees it doesn't matter wan nakhl it's a type of a tree or a, or a class of trees basiqatin aloft Laha Talaun Nadid with the spits tired. Okay. What matters is the following phrase Rizqan Lil Ibad. Rizqan Lil Ibad. Wa Ahyena Bihi Beldat and Maitan Kadalika Khuruj. A provision for Ibad. Look, uh, some of the translators. Translate Ibad as bondmen. Not at all. Not at all. Allah says, Rizq al Ibad. Do you think that the fruits of the palm tree or whatever tree is enjoyed only by, by those who worship, quote unquote, worship Allah? Doesn't make any sense, right? Right. Now, now there's something interesting here. We, we may ne not have the final word on some aspects of this, not the major aspects. Allah could have said, and this is one style that I use to understand certain phrases by, by trying to replace a word by something else and see what it gives me. Now, if we were to say, Allah says, Rizqan linnas. Why he didn't say Rizqan linnas? He said Rizqan lil ibad. Mm. Anyways, that's a side note. We can maybe think about it later on. But let's continue with our you know theme. Now, another verse, thirty-nine fifty-three, surah, uh, surah thirty-nine, verse fifty-three. Allah says, "Qul ya ibadi." الذين أسرفوا على أنفسهم لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا إن الله هو الغفور الرحيم uh, Again, promulgate يا عبادي O oh my عباد Let's leave it untranslated O oh my عباد Those who have أسرفوا أسرفوا على أنفسهم Now uh, Asrafu is translated typically as those who have been extravagant against themselves. Okay? Allah is saying here, if we were to buy this translation and we continue, Allah is saying, don't give up on Allah's mercy. Allah is always merciful. Don't give up on his mercy. But Asrafu, Asrafu is a word that can be understood by going to other verses in the Mus'haf as well. Now, we need to understand Asrafu a little bit to go back to this important verse, 39.53. Asrafu in, 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 in typical modern Arabic, if you ask an Arab and tell him what does Asrafu mean, it's, it, it, he or she will tell you uh, those who spend too much, overspend. Okay. Now, I really don't see how Allah will get mad at me if I buy a $5 million house, if I have the money. I, I, I don't see any problem with that. If I, if I have the wealth to, to, if I pay zakah and all of that, and I build, mashallah, schools and hospitals, and I buy a Ferrari, I don't see any problem with that. So I really don't think that asrafu implies to overspend or to be extravagant. And the reason is, if we go back to uh, another verse in the Mus'haf, 
uh, Allah uh, says, and I'm sorry, I don't remember the verse number, but I uh, remember the verse. I wrote it in front of me. Allah says, قَالَ فَمَا خَطْبُكُمْ أَيُّهَا الْمُرْسَلُونَ This is the story of uh, Nabi Prophet Lut. قَالُوا إِنَّا أُرْسِلْنَا إِلَىٰ قَوْمٍ مُجْرِمِينَ لنرسل عليهم حجارة من طين مسومة عند ربك للمسرفين Allah is sending uh, حجارة من طين Allah is sending punishment that is consisting of stones whatever for those who are مسرفين okay so مسرفين is not those who overspend overspend uh, and and there are other verses in the Mus'haf. So the bottom line is that when we go back to that verse that I mentioned, um, Musrifin does not mean those who are who overspend. Musrifin is tied with sin. Musrifin are sinful people. Forty forty three surah uh, uh, forty verse forty three, Allah says La Jarama. أن ما تدعونني إليه ليس له دعوة في الدنيا ولا في الآخرة وأن مردنا الله وإن المسرفين هم أصحاب النار. The مسرفين are the people of hellfire. So clearly, مسرفين are those who are sinful, not are nice people who are quote and quote. God fearing and worshiping of him. So this takes us to that verse 3953 that I started with. See, if Musrifin are Ashabun Nar, so these ibad, these ibad are Ashabun Nar. Right. So ibad, I think, is is not connected with uh, ibad does not imply the the concept that is used in English to worship. Worship, right? And a few yeah. more, a, a few more. If unless you have a question, because there are very important verse that I yeah, need yeah, to no, read. go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Sure. So now we go to forty three eighty one, forty three uh, verse eighty one. Allah says, قُلْ إِنْ كَانِ لِلْرَّحْمَانِ وَلَدٌ فَأَنَا أَوَّلُ الْعَابِدِينَ Promulgate that if the Rahman, and, and the Rahman, I don't think it means the most compassionate. There's no connection. Rahman doesn't mean compassionate. Okay? Uh, إِنْ كَانِ لِلْرَّحْمَانِ وَلَدٌ فَأَنَا أَوَّلُ الْعَابِدِينَ Promulgate or declare that if the Rahman has a, a walad, son, then I am the first Abidin. Okay, the first Abidin. Yeah. Okay. This is interesting. Very, very interesting. So he it says that Allah elsewhere in many verses in the Mus'haf, and there are uh, there's about twenty-seven or twenty-eight verses in the Mus'haf. Allah clearly explicitly states that he did not take, he never had a son or adopted a son, both. He used both. Right. In some verses, he said, I didn't have a son. In other verses, he said, I did not adopt a son. And adopt and take are two different words. Right. Okay. So, uh, when it comes to this verse, okay, so if he kept saying, I did not take a son, I did not adopt a son, I am one, okay? In this, in this uh, Surah 4381, the Prophet is being, is told to declare that if the Rahman had a son, then he, i.e. the Prophet, is the first one to be of the Abidin. Now, it's very interesting. So, so it's obviously 
it implies that I will be, I will reject you. I will, I will not obey you. You see, if if you if you keep telling us, Allah, if you keep telling us in thirty or or so verses that I am one, I am one, I am one, I did not take a son, and all of a sudden, I find that the Rahman has a son, then obviously I'm not a believer. I am no longer a believer. I'm no longer. I no longer obey the Rahman. I no longer obey Allah. So in summary of all the verses that we put here, all of them, the conclusion is that Abid, Ibad, Ibad are people that can obey Allah or disobey Allah. Either way. So they you have yeah, very good point. So you have a freedom. You can either obey Allah or you can disobey Allah. And and, 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 and and I think this takes us to the first thing we started with today. The very beginning that you mentioned that you focused my attention to 5156. Right. So that they have the freedom to obey me or they have the and they have the freedom to disobey me and that is how i understand it they have the freedom to obey me and they have the freedom to disobey me and let's not bring worship here we can talk about worship next okay, okay. so you're saying the when you look read the quran and understand the quran the freedom is uh, everywhere you can see I mean, there is no, uh, Allah don't want anybody, you know, you cannot force somebody to do something. It's you, Allah has given you a choice and you can do according to the laws and rules of Allah if you want. If you don't want, you can go to another direction. But obviously, if you go to a different direction, you're off track, you will face the consequences. Is that true? I, I fully, fully agree. Now, let's parse this even further. Uh, there are people who, the, 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 there are people who believe in Allah. They believe that he is one. He does not have partners. They're not mushrikeen. They don't, they're not kuffar. In other words, they don't hide the truth. They, right. they did not see the truth. Okay. And, and so they, they, they satisfy these three. And the fourth, they don't follow, they don't obey Allah's commandments. It's possible, isn't it? Right. The, the, no, no, these are not contradictory, these four. They believe in Allah, absolutely. Okay? But they don't follow His commandments. They're not mushrik. They believe in Allah. They believe He's one. They don't associate anyone with His power. Mm -hmm. Not even a prophet like many Muslims do. And they don't make kufr. In other words, you show them an apple, they tell you, yeah, it's an apple. You show them the sun is coming from the, from the uh, east, they say, yeah, it's coming from the east. But the fourth, they kill. They kill, they steal, they are not kind to their parents when they get old, and they lie. Is it possible? Of course. I've seen those examples in my life, right? Okay, those, those, those are the people who will get punished and burn in hell? No, I, I'm going to get to that. But but first of all, let's establish that. Is that a possibility? Do you agree with me? Is that a possibility or not? It is a possibility, yes. It is. Okay. So now, so if that is a possibility, then I think, and this is, this is my conclusion, my extrapolation, is that these people are what you referred to just about two minutes ago are the ones who will lead a, a terrible life, a miserable life. 
okay. a life full of conflict. Okay. I hope you see my my line of thinking is that we really need to classify to cla not to lump everything in one. Okay, because you know al mujrimun al mujrimun those who and we'll get to this and we'll get to the to the ibadah in a second, but there are those who are mujrimun al mujrimun from jarama. The word jarama means to disconnect. Okay, disconnect. So, so jarama literally means to disconnect. So those who disconnect themselves from Allah. Many people refer to them as atheists. I don't think there's atheism. I don't think that atheism is a possibility, by the way. Okay. I don't think. Okay. So, because when when you disconnect, God forbid, let's say you disconnect your relationship from a friend, friend X, it means that you realize he exists, but you just don't want to associate with him. Right. So there's no word in the Mus'haf, no word to my best of my knowledge that has the equivalent of atheism, none. None, which means that Allah is telling us that it's impossible for such thing to exist. I mean, you know, atheism for us is a big deal, but Allah is 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 is, is completely avoiding it. Why? It means it's an impossibility. It's an impossibility because we construe things according to our brain. Other people have a different concept of of the of the power behind the behind the universe nevertheless but there are people who disconnect themselves from Allah and these people by the way a fifth category that i just mentioned so so far we have five categories five categories of course we have much more we have ulul kitab as-sabi'in al-yahud and so forth but now now the the question is the next next question uh, did Allah specify how we we worship, uh, we ya'budun, how we make ibadah? Okay. Now, there's a verse, verse 3, uh, surah 3, verse 51. Allah says, Wa inna Allah rabbi wa rabbukum, inna Allah rabbi wa rabbukum. Look at the fine details. Allah rabbi wa rabbukum. He didn't say ilahi. See, this is important. Many people try to, first of all, uh, translate, uh, you know, when they talk to English speaking people, they, they use the word God instead of Allah. Right. And, and, and I don't think that's correct. That is not correct. There's ilah, there's Rabb, there's Allah, there's Rahman. But let's leave Rahman aside. There is Allah, Rabb, and Ilah. These are not synonyms. This is this is really really important. So when we translate Allah, Allah cannot be translated. You know, I mean, my name is Omar. If I go to China, you have to call me Omar. You cannot translate my name to something else, whether they you know. Okay, so God is a deity. Rab is the closest thing that I can think of is owner or lord or something in between. Okay. So Allah says here, Wa in Allah Rabbi wa Rabbukum, Allah is my perhaps Lord, perhaps sustainer, mine and yours. Fa'buduhu Hadha Siratin Mustaqim. Now this is verse three. So uh, verse 351, right. this is one, one verse. This is important, brother. Very, very important point. This is one verse, not two verses. One. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ رَبِّي وَرَبُّكُمْ فَعْبُدُوهُ فَعْبُدُوهُ Let's leave the word فَعْبُدُوهُ And I think, I think Muslims should have the confidence to, to really leave words the way they are rather than to translate it as 
to translate it to not to appease or please, but to to simplify or to make it appealing. The idea is not to make anything appealing. Allah says in the Mus'haf, وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَالْيُؤْمِنُ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَالْيَكْفُرُ Whoever wants to make Iman can do it and whoever wants to make Kufr. The idea is to understand things properly. So Allah says, وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ رَبِّي وَرَبُكُمْ فَعْبُدُوهُ هَذَا صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ One, one, one verse. أَعْبُدُوهُ هَذَا صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ This is a straight path. Now here, here, we go to the Surah Al-An'am. Surah Al-An'am, verses 151 to 153. I think these are very important. So, so far, to summarize, Ibadah is to worship, to, to obey or disobey. To follow, I actually, I would be more specific, to follow a certain path or not to follow a certain path. Why, let me ask you something. Uh... Why is this so many, like, those verses you talk about, why the meaning was changed to worshipping? All of the verses, I mean, they, they when they translated it... I'll, I'll, I'll tell you my... I, I'll tell you. I, I, I wrote about this in my book. I wrote about the evolution of how things, in my opinion, how things evolved to, 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 to lump ibadah and ibtila, two words. Ibadah and Ibtila to make them synonymous with worship. I'll tell you my feelings. Sure. If I'll just finish this point and make sure that I go back to this because that's really important how things, this this will answer your questions. Why did this become like that, right? Yes. So, so verses 151 to 153 in, in, in Surah number 6. I think it's Al-An'am. Al-An'am, right. Okay. Allah says, uh, 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 and this actually also, sometimes I'm ahead of myself, will help us classify things more properly. Okay. Allah says, قُلْ تَعَالُوا أَتْلُوا مَا حَرَّمَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَيْكُمْ Come, let me declare to you what Allah has made haram for you. Sorry. تَعَالُوا أَتْلُوا مَا حَرَّمَ رَبُّكُمْ What your Lord has made haram for you. Allah didn't say, تَعَالُمْ أَتُّ مَا حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمْ مَا حَرَّمَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَيْكُمْ Okay? Because the Rabb, we have no choice. There's a difference between, right. you know, you know you know that, right? There's right. a difference. Right. Okay. أَلَّا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا Don't make shirk. وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا And with parents, be kind to them. وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَوْلَادَكُمْ Don't kill your uh, offsprings or your sons and daughters fearing that you will be uh, in poverty. We, we give them, we, we sustain them and you as well. And do not approach, do not approach fawahish, what is explicit, what is overt and what is covert, what is implicit and what's explicit of it. ولا تقتل النفس التي حرم الله إلا بالحق and do not kill the nafs that Allah has made haram except through truth except إلا بالحق ذلكم وصاكم به لعلكم تعقلون okay he commanded that you follow these list you list you تعقلون list you تعقلون okay we'll come to this later now let me just continue so that I don't deviate from the theme. The next one, 152, six. Don't approach them the, the 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 finances, the money of the yatim, of the orphan. Right. Except through a proper means and through goodness and beautiful means. Until he is mature enough. And do not and, and be be fair when you when you deal with the trade and and commerce. Uh, we don't. Sorry, this is. I'm still at seven. We don't. Uh, we don't exert people beyond their means. We don't ask people to to go beyond their means. And if you say, be just, be truthful. Even if they were amongst your 
kinfolks. And if you make a covenant with Allah, fulfill it. ذَلِكُمْ وَصَّاكُمْ بِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ ذَلِكُمْ وَصَّاكُمْ بِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ He commanded you, he, re he reminded you of and, and commanded you of this, lest you may make dhikr, تَذَكَّرُونَ now, third, the last verse, the three verses. وَإِنَّ هَذَا صِرَاطِ مُسْتَقِيمٌ فَاتَّبِعُوهُ وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا السُّبُلُ And this is my sirat mustaqim. Mm. Now, so can we conclude, can we conclude that in light of these three verses and the the Earlier one, when I say uh, the first one, when I uh, the when I just mentioned, وَإِنَّ uh, اللَّهَ رَبِّي وَلَكُمْ فَعْبُدُهُ هَذَا صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ. If we bring these four together, can we conclude that عِبَادَةُ اللَّهِ عِبَادَة translates to follow these nine commandments. Now it's interesting. For me, it makes a lot of sense, especially that verse 351 when he says, mm -hmm. One verse, one verse, not right. two. Right. Now, one might say, this is a thought that I just came to my mind recently. There are more haram in the Mus'haf. Let's, 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 I'm going to think loudly with you, if I may. Go ahead. <laughs> there are other harams in the Mus'haf, correct? These are not the only ones. Right? For instance, Al-Khamr. Right? Al-Khamr, Al-Ithm. Al-Ithm. Al-Ithm is haram. Is it mentioned in these uh, three here? No. no. Okay. Al-Maytata, Wad-Dami, Walahm Al-Khanzir. The things that we are not allowed to eat. Right. Are they mentioned here? No. They're not. So, so we can conclude that the harams are not lumped together. They're not lumped together. There are certain harams that are outside the Sirat al Mustaqim. Do you see? So, no. for instance, you know, whether someone goes and, 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 pigs out, as they say, and eats a 5 kg of pork, you know, how does that affect me? It doesn't affect me. Right. Allah said, don't do it. Allah said, don't do it. Now, it, Siam, is it here? Is it mentioned here? The do's, the do's, right. not the talks. No. It's not mentioned here. No. You know whether you fat or not. How um, how is the society affected by this? Not much. M maybe maybe as uh, <laughs> some people get so oh, like Surah five sixty nine and Surah two sixty two when God talks about you know three things like you know you do you believe in Allah you believe in last day and you do good deeds. And you're fine. You don't have to worry about anything. He doesn't mention anything about, you know, like worshiping or doing all those things. That's very but, important too. So well, well, you see exactly. And and if I may say, you know, the the concept of worship. I mean, because we are st we, we we petrify our thinking when we borrow a concept. A word is a concept. A concept is abstracted in a word. And the word is a concept. And we take something from, from other milal, what Allah refers to as milal, not other religions. There's only one religion. But if Allah, if we take something from Christianity, you know, uh, whatever, I, I'm, I'm not an expert in Christianity. Uh, we have to be respectful to our Christian brothers. But uh, if we take a concept, we really have to understand where ibadah has nothing to do with siyam and salah and hajj and reading 
the Quran. I mean, th this might sound uh, this is very, very important. Uh, yeah. Point, and I think this is very eye-opening for a lot of folks watching our show because this is, you know, people always think that, you know, they go for all the rituals they think is mandatory. Without that, you are nothing. You know, they more you know, time. Yes. You know, spend more time on those things, and actually. You know, forget about the thing which you know really deals with humanity. So, yeah, I, I want to say that I, I I am I am not in the business, and I'm very careful to. I, I'm not trying to tell people that other things outside, strictly speaking, the Sirat al Mustaqim, have little value, or or I'm going to I'm not going to quantify the value. I'm not. Right. What I am after is that we have to pay careful attention. Is that the the so called ibadat are not ibadat. Right. The so called ibadat are not ibadat. Allah says, and and when Allah says something to us, and think it's not a joke, it, it's a serious thing. I mean, it's we, a fact. It, it it's. It's something deep. I mean, this is the creator, the sustainer of the universe, of the galaxies, is telling us something. Well, it's like it. a fact. It's a fact. It's a fact. Exactly. Exactly. Allah says in 2014, Surah 20, verse 14, okay, ana illa ana. This is in the context of Musa. Allah is addressing the prophet Musa. Innani ana Allah La ilaha illa ana. Look, he didn't say Rab. La ilaha illa ana. Fa'budni. Fa'budni. Wa aqima salata li dhikri. See? Wa aqima salata li dhikri. So ibadah here is distinguished from iqamati salah. Now, some people will react violently to what I'm saying. And, and people should be patient and, and careful here. We are not in the game of saying this is more important than that. M many Muslims love this game. Our prophet is better than yours. Our companions, is, this companion is better than that one. This sheikh is better than this one. This differentiation, we should really drop it. Allah says in the Mus'haf even, referring to the Anbiya, لا نفرق بين أحد منهم. Okay, so let's stop this game. We need to understand. Okay, here Allah is saying in 2014, إنني أنا الله لا إله إلا أنا فاعبدني So the, there are two separate things. One is إقامة الصلاة, and we know that الصلاة is traced back to Ibrahim, the Prophet Ibrahim. Okay, this is Musa. Allah is talking to Musa. Innani ana Allah la ilaha illa ana fa'budni. Fa'budni. Wa aqim as-salata li dhikri. Two. So again, we're not into the game of, oh, this is more important than others. Yeah, but yeah, these yeah. are different things. You know, these are different things. These are different. So, al-ibadah. Ibadah has to do with the sirat al-mustaqim. These are broad, broad concepts on which on which the society is based, the collective is based. Whereas, and, and, and there's no, by the way, and there's no if and but in them. They, they, they're not really difficult. Uh, you don't need Ibn Kathir to tell you that, you know, what does, <laughs> what does it mean to be kind to your parents? <laughs> why, do right? you, why, why do you think, Brother Omar, why the Muslims are you know, so ignorant of their own religion. I mean, do you think because of the tradition, uh, traditions from the history and they're just watching people in the past, what they were doing, and they just don't come to the Quran, they don't understand, they don't read and understand the Quran the way it's supposed to be. And they just following the, you know, their ancestors, whatever they're doing, the traditions going on and on and on. So what is the factor? I don't know. You tell me. The, 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 I think there's a, this might sound 
a bit strong, but I think there's a conspiracy against the Quran. There is a conspiracy against the divine revelation. This conspiracy was hatched from, from way, way, way back, not many years after our the Prophet Muhammad died. There's a conspiracy to divert the attention of Muslims, to hijack Muslims, to hijack them, to divert their attention from the only source, the only hidayah, the only document that Allah sent, we sent it as hidayah, divert attention to something else. And, and, and you know, you may call it sunnah, you may call it hadith, you may call it whatever, but there is a, a, a concerted effort because when, when, when we bring very crystal clear concepts that are articulated in the Mus'haf, Unfortunately, some brothers and sisters, they say, they say no, it's, it needs explanation. But Allah says, Bayyannahu, we have exposed it. We have detailed it. You see, uh, the, if, 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 if you were to ask an average Muslim, why do you believe in in Islam, okay? Why why do you believe in in the Mus'haf? I mean, it's it's a it's a logical question. Why, right? Um, and the answer is difficult. I don't think that many people will give you a sufficient answer. If if I were to believe in the Prophet who in the message, in the message that Muhammad delivered, that the Prophet Muhammad delivered, I need to see substantive proof, validation. I need to see it. If a Christian, a Christian believe, for instance, that the, that Isa, the prophet Isa raised people from the dead, they believe in it. They believe in it, but they haven't seen it. Okay. If so, so the message, the message to Christ, the Christian message, the, the, the message of Isa السلام, was local in time and space. If, if the message of Islam is eternal and not local in time and space, then I need to see validation in this book. Now, we turn the religion, we turn the religion into a tradition. And this is this is the biggest thing. We're, we're, we're comforted by this tradition. Religion is not a source of of comfort. Where does Allah say it's a source of comfort? It's a source of hidayah. On, even, on the, yeah, on the, even, you know, on the yeah, contrary, even, sometimes sorry, but sometimes religion pushes you to on, to be in an active state of of consciousness. Yeah, on the same note, I'm going to ask you this, because I feel like most of the people, even you show them the contradiction, you know, all those hadiths, uh, we tell them, well, there's a contradiction, but they, they feel comfortable. They say, okay, no problem. Look for the one which is, you know, better. So I don't understand there. I, I want to say, brother, I want to say is that what I started saying is that the if the, if the relation if Islam is supposed to be till eternity, till the end of time, till the end of time, I don't say not just, it's not correct to say till eternity, till the end of time, then, then it cannot be, it cannot be exemplified by a man with his followers, the way they eat, the way they sit, the way they act, the way they do commerce, the way they do wars. For the average Muslim, it's easier to see an example so they so so the center of islam has switched from the mushaf to the prophet and his life you see the center of islam and this is very identical to what the christians did the center was shifted to jesus we shifted the center muslim shifted the center to muhammad and his companions and the way they lived and the way they acted, if 
يرفع عمر بن الخطاب if Umar al-Khattab uh, drafted a treaty or he had a treaty with certain non-Muslims, then it became a model for us to follow. If Umar ibn al-Khattab uh, did some uh, commercial transaction, then it became a standard. It became, it became a relation for us. You see, if, 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 if a certain, if the prophet, if the prophet did something whatever that thing is, we want to know exactly how we did it and we structured it as a religion. So we really diverted, diverted the center of Islam exactly the way the Christians did. They diverted the center of the religion to Jesus. We diverted the center of religion to, to Muhammad. And when we say this, they say, you know, you have to love Muhammad. It has nothing to do with the love of Muhammad or not love of Muhammad. The, the religion of Islam is not based on the love of Muhammad. The religion of Islam is based on following the commandments of Allah. It's very simple. So that's what they're doing. Like they, they, they you know, no matter what happened, they followed the Prophet Muhammad. And they just, they don't even read the Quran, they don't understand the Quran, they say, well, we have listened and uh, read the Hadith, that's what Muhammad did, and they just follow the Prophet no matter what. See, see the, the, what we, what the, 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 the few minutes, more than I expected, that I started talking about introducing my thoughts today about the words, the meaning of words, the, the concept that words have meaning, we Muslims have trashed that aside the concept it's a very simple concept that words have meaning i mean if if, if i say this people will laugh at me you say what do you mean it's obvious words have meaning but we drop that when it because i know the answer i dealt with many muslims they will say but allah says Atiru, fall, uh, obey the prophet and and some scholars have even written these words verbatim obey the prophet but allah never said that allah said obey the messenger. He never said obey the prophet. This takes us, this brings us to that, to the, to the meaning of prophet, the meaning of messenger. These are two different things. We ceased to pay attention to that. Absolutely. You know, people talk about Uswal Hasana. Look, you know, well, we, we have, unfortunately, this style, this, I call it the, 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 the quantity, you know, they, they bombard you with a quantity rather than quality. They say, but Allah says, uh, um, you know, the Prophet uh, follow, he had an uh, uswa hasana. We have to follow the uswa hasana. Uh, we have to follow the, the uh, footsteps of the Prophet and on and on and on. All of these concepts are completely misconstrued. They're completely false because the prophet is as is, is a role and the messenger is a uh, sorry the prophet is a status and the messenger is a role they're two different things every you know the the saying goes is that we were told when we were little ad nauseum that every messenger is a prophet but not every prophet is a messenger. This is not true. It's the other way around. Every prophet is a messenger, but not every messenger is a prophet. And 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 Allah says, you know, that to, to, to Allah says that Muhammad was the last prophet. And have you heard that from people? People keep saying, Muslim keep saying that Muhammad was the last prophet and messenger. But that's wrong that's wrong allah says he muhammad khatim al nabiyin he didn't say khatim al nabiyin wal mursaleen now what i'm after is that we failed we muslims have really to go back and and understand the meaning behind the words this is what we need to to focus on not not grammar Gra th there's you know, the grammar of the Mus'haf, if there is such a grammar, is completely different in contradiction with the grammar 
of the uh, with the Arabic grammar that we use nowadays. <laughs> you know, there, there are so many, whenever you tell people, but wait a minute, this is, you know, the, the grammar of the Mus'haf, this verse says so-and-so, which is different from what we were told. They say, oh, the Quran is exceptional. What? You know, uh, one of the, one of the uh, probably very famous uh, lecture that uh, Zakar Naik gave, and someone stood up and he said, I want to challenge you. The Quran has many, uh, many grammatical mistakes. And of course, look, when they corner our shuyukh, what do our shuyukh say? Now, look, now they say, oh, the mushaf is the reference. You should, they should have said that from the very beginning, right? They should say it when they attack us, when they attack anyone who wants to interpret or understand the mushaf when they attack with this classical attack is that, oh, you don't understand the Arabic grammar. This is a classic line of, of attack. But when someone points out that, wait a minute, your book contradicts the grammar that you guys believe in, they say, oh, wait, the reference is the Mus'haf. Of course, the reference is the Mus'haf. That's as, uh, that's as far as the grammar. But as far as the words, words, I am surprised. I'm really surprised when I ask people, what does this word mean? And they get frustrated. They get frustrated and at the end, they say, why are you doing this? Why are you complicating things? You know, but without, without, and, and we at fault, we, we, are, we Muslims are at fault because we haven't developed the study of words. Words come from roots. Yes. You know, I, I want to tell you this and for the, for the audience, and I hope they appreciate this. Arabic, the, the word Arabic means something pure and original. Okay, it has it has nothing to do with the Arabic language. It means something pure and original. And when Allah refers to Al Quran, bilisanun Arabi, an original, pure tongue. It's constructed. The words come from pure original tongue, meaning that they evolved naturally. And that's why, that's why the theory that all languages came from Arabic is not far-fetched. It's not far-fetched at all. You know, think about it. Allah is using, could Allah use a man-made language? It doesn't make any sense. It does not. And that's what the Arabs have thought. The Arabs have thought that Allah is using their language. Yeah. Not true. In fact, some Arabs are cornered when you tell them, wait a minute, this word comes from Hebrew or this word comes from Aramic. There's no harm in that. You know why? Because Allah is using original tongue. Allah is using original words whether the Arabs, the people who call themselves the Arabs, are using it or not, Allah is using original words, words that evolved naturally, that but were here. not borrowed, no, not borrowed from somewhere else, or, I'll stop right here, or they were man-made. Let me ask you, brother, Umar, did you travel so many places around the globe? around the world and you have you have many Arab friends you went to different Arab countries in Middle East you think there's how many people have the same way of thinking about what you're explaining to me about all this thing in Quran and like especially the word Arab you know the, the which is used in verses in Quran you think the Arab people your friends your colleagues when you talk to them 
they have the same understanding like you or they still yeah. going the same uh, traditional way a lot of I'll people tell you frankly over the last i would say 10 years there has been a dramatic shift in the thinking of a good number of arabs about the quran uh I am so pleased to say this. There has been a dramatic shift. Uh, I myself came up with some concepts and I put them in the book that you announced yeah. that I wrote. Mm -hmm. And I thought, one of them, for instance, when I talked about Salah al Nabi and the meaning and all of that and the misunderstanding and the misconception, I I'm, 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 a, I'm an academic through and through. What do I mean by that? If I know that someone else came up with a concept before me, I need to reference it. Right. Okay. That's, we don't take an oath. Academics don't take an oath, but, but it's inside of every good academic that they have to give credit. I came up with several concepts and some of these concepts I discovered recently that other people had this had come up with them independently. You know, when 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 I when I thought of of this absurdity of the phrase that we repeat, repeat uh, the Salah al Nabi, the the hollowness of this phrase. I I talked to people left and right. I I talked I. I discussed it with people from Iran, from India, US, Arab countries, and I thought I came up with something profound. Of course, you know, people reacted in different ways, but recently, just the last five, six months, I found that other people have came up with the same concept independently. Now, when people come up with a concept or people come up with, in, with it independently, it means there's a, some kind of a collective thinking that is taking place. In the Arab speaking world, there's, I would say, there is a major cultural dash Quranic revolution taking place. What was the reason? You know, it's very interesting. What is the reason? It's hard to it's hard to pinpoint at uh, 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 at one thing, but I think that certain people had a major factor in accelerating this awakening, on which had major influence, and and on me in particular is Muhammad Shahur, who died in 1970, uh, who died in 19, uh, 2019 in November. He was a, a a major figure who I think has has created a. a a gigantic shift in the in the thinking of many Muslims. Uh, for instance, he 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 researched Quran for fifty years, and then he started writing about his findings uh, since nineteen ninety. Uh, there is another person uh, to a uh, to a lesser degree. Adnan Rifai. Adnan Rifai contributed significantly, but unfortunately. I think that he followed a different line later on. But so, and I, in my search on my own, I found that in the Indo-Pakistani subcontinent, they were amazing figures that people have discredited and dismissed as the Quranis or heretics or Munkiri uh, as Sunnah, Wal Hadith, and so forth. So, uh, and, and I'm sure that if one were to even look at the the thought the 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 the, the intellectual life that was taking place a hundred years after the prophet died which was led by what we refer to in a derogatory way as the mu'tazilites uh, contributed to to the thinking of many people that are experiencing this awakening today because people at that time you see when when the if i may say just to deviate a little bit when the arabs when islam ex expanded and reached persia and and the surrounding areas it inter uh, it interacted with with thinkers with philosophers 
And these philosophers were really deep and they started asking all kinds of questions. And that's what, in my opinion, led to that intellectual revolution that typically is attributed or typically is lumped as the Mu'tazilites uh, school of thought. Anyways, going back to today, I think that these people that I mentioned had major influence. And I would say that Muhammad Shahrud in particular, uh, he was a, a Syrian uh, civil engineer, had major, major influence on reshaping our thinking about the importance of the words of the divine revelation. Okay, so now in the English speaking world, unfortunately, the English speaking Muslim world or Muslims are lagging behind significantly. Uh, the English speaking uh, so called scholarship that comes out about Quran is, is highly decorated, but in my opinion, has little substance. I hope I don't offend many people in that, but this is my 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 subjective thought, and I apologize if I offend people. But in comparison to the to the intellectual Quranic output that is coming from the Arab speaking world, uh, there's a there's a huge difference. So and and another thing, brother, another thing is that in the old days, information was the privilege of the few uh, nowadays on my on this cell phone that i have i have the entire six sahih i have the entire quran i have the in, uh, five or six tafasir i have uh, the, this incredible powerful database that allows me to to download any verse at any time that allows me to classify, to put together all the verses that have the word, for instance, qata'a or daraba or sabaha. So this acceleration or this amazing, uh, this availability of this amazing wealth of information, uh, which is no longer exclusive to, to certain people, I think allowed us to extract, uh, to, to, to extract concepts and that is what Allah refers to in the Quran when I said I might come to certain points that I went over briefly. When Allah says, Afala ta'qilun, afala tadakkarun. You know, ta'qil. Ta'qil means to connect the dots so that you come up with a yeah. concept, with something. That's As what I was trying to say. Like, I think the other cause, like you, our topic today is about it. You think that people realize what we discussed today, the real, what the real ibadat is. That's why they're, they look at the past history, what's going on with the tradition and that thing is not working across the globe, especially in Muslim country. Now they realize with all the tools they have in their hand, they look, they're applying their logic and they're saying, listen, that has to be a different meaning of ibadat, what we discussed. And you know, if, if that is the real meaning what they have portrayed, like worshiping, and that should be working a long time ago. But you see, 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 one thing is that Ibadah is, is, is one component that, that Allah is, is, is talking about in the Mus'haf. It's one component. Ibadah is one component. There are other things that Allah talked about for, for the people who follow Muhammad. The Prophet Muhammad, you know, we're not trying to to be humble enough, in my opinion, humble enough to really try to understand what Allah is trying to tell us. We're not. We're not. There's ibadah, but there's the concept of kitaba, kataba. For instance, siyam. Siyam is not in the context of ibadah. Look, we turned siyam into into ibadah. Right. I, I, I don't, why, why is Siyam Ibadah? Allah didn't say Siyam is Ibadah. Never yes. said that. Uh, uh, Allah didn't say Iqamat al-Salah is Ibadah. It's a connection. It's not a Ibadah. You see, Ib Allah didn't say that. 
Allah didn't say Hajj is ibadah. So these are things that Allah asked us to do, not not fard. They're not fard. That's what I was going to say. They make it fard. Uh, you see, because we we, we the, the 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 simpler the person is, you know. It, <laughs> Remember that joke when people say, oh, kings have a blue blood, okay? So this is how they separated. Kings have blue blood, the rest of us have red blood. Yeah. So the simplest, the simplest, uh, uh, the simpler the person, the less that person classifies, you know? Uh, uh, the Italians have dominated the, the, the ties market and the shirt market because they can produce so many variety of shirts and silk products. <laughs> so they're ahead of, of the rest. Uh, a car manufacturer can give you a spectrum of performances. We didn't want to, to, to rise to the challenge that Allah is challenging us in the Mus'haf. When, when Allah uses different words, look, brother, very simple. When Allah uses a different words, who am I to come and say, oh, Allah, you mean these words are the same? Look at the arrogance. Allah uses different words, okay? Why should I assume these words to mean the same? You see, that's why I believe there was a conspiracy against the Quran. There was an effort to derail the Muslims, you know, change their orientation from the Mus'haf, who is a book that, that, it stresses freedom. Look, I mean, look at the freedom. Obey Allah or disobey. You have the freedom to do that. So they flipped, they, they turned the concept of ibadah, which, which in my opinion, if, if I were to simplify it, and you ask me, what does ibadah mean? I would say freedom. It, you see, it's connected to freedom. They flipped it to mean bondship, to mean uh, to mean ubudiyya, uh, to mean yeah. slavery. Look, yeah. ibadah, they flipped it to imply slavery. And and they, so, so there was a, there was an effort somehow, I talked about it in my book in, in, in some detail, to, to change the, the theme of the religion into control and constraint to constrain people and to control them. So that's why the concept of ibadah was flipped to imply what we refer to today as worship. And the second is ibtila. You know, ibtila. People say, oh, you know, we were created to have ibtila. And you know, and ibtila, ibtila means it could be by so, the way, ibtila has two, 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 two directions, by the way. It's not suffering at all. Ibtila is a, is a test that yeah. can be with good things or with bad things. Both, according to the Mus'haf. In other words, I can, I can make ibtila, uh, you can be ibtila with good things. Or you can be ibtilad with bad. bad things, both. So you see, so they turn the religion slowly, slowly into something that confines you. It makes it that, that it, it gives you the impression that hardship. Look, that hardship is part of the purpose of the creation. Look, they made hardship. They turned it into you. Yeah, into the purpose of the creation. Absolutely not. You know, in other words, accept the misery, be patient, accept it, and just say, oh, this is Allah is forgiving my sins that I'm going through this hardship. This is a very good point you raised, brother. I mean, when you look at the nature, there's no hardship. When you look around in the nature, the nature is beautiful, everything is flowing, you know, everybody has freedom. Why they created this hardship? <laughs> yeah, and and if you pay careful attention, Allah says the bala is both ways. Bil khair wa shar. Lana bluwakum bil khair, or na bluwakum bil shar. Both, but they don't like to hear that. 
They like to hear that bala is bala is hardship. No, no, bala doesn't mean hardship at all, at all. Worship, worship has nothing to do with with what they been with what we've been told. Worship is uh, ibadah is ultimate freedom. You know, can you imagine, brother? People have fought and killed themselves. Millions of people have died to uphold freedom. And Allah forgot this concept in the Mus'haf? Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any sense. Where, where is it? Where is it in the Mus'haf? Where is the concept of freedom? Allah didn't care about freedom. That's the purpose of the creation. <laughs> Look. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنُوَ وَالْإِنسَى إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ So that they follow their manhaj, the manhaj that they choose. But I want them, I want them to follow this manhaj. أَعْبُدُونِي هَذَا صِرَاطِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ So what better religion than this? Where it tells you you have the ultimate freedom. It, it, and when Allah says we have honored humanity, what more? You know, how, how would I honor someone? I give him that freedom. That's the ultimate honor. I give that person freedom. What else? What else? Where's the expression of honor? Thank, thank you, Brother Omar. You have explained in such a nice way. I, in the last, in the end, I will ask you to please give a last message to our audience. If you want to go ahead, please. You, you, you're treating me as if I'm a wise man, huh? <laughs> thank you. Thank you for that. However you feel like to give us a dollar. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for that. I, I think that I want, I want Muslims to be courageous and confident uh, uh, and, and use and deal with this divine revelation as it was revealed right now for each one of us. We have to deal with it directly and let's not be intimidated by the clergy who have jumped between us and Allah. Let's not be intimidated by anyone. There should be no one between me and Allah. I, if, if Allah sent this book for all of us, then absolutely I'm one of those, us. I may not understand everything in the Mus'haf, but I need to put the effort to understand whatever I can understand. We have to liberate ourselves. We have to liberate ourselves from all these misconceptions, this disastrous misconceptions that have turned us into into nations amongst the very bottom in all developmental metrics that you can think of. All developmental metrics, we are at the bottom of nations. The question is why, why? And my opinion is that we have created a different religion. We're not following the religion that Allah sent to us from its source and only the only source, which is the Mus'haf, which is the divine revelation, which is the also people refer to it as the Quran. Quran. Thank you so much, doctor, for your time today. Thank you so much for spending time with us today. My, my pleasure. And, uh, viewers, uh, this is the end of the show. Again, in the last, I'm going to say, please read, try to understand Quran, ponder more on Quran, take care of yourself, your family, your neighbors. We will see you, inshallah, in another episode. Uh, goodbye from me. Asalaamu Alaikum, Dr. Sir. Asalaamu Alaikum, brother. Take care. All the best. Thank you for hosting me. Thank you. Take care.